Today, the world's shores are under attack. Armies of aliens are secretly invading our coasts. In the Caspian Sea, swarms of ghostly hunters have contributed to the collapse of entire commercial fisheries. In Europe, armoured invaders are rampaging up rivers and threatening local fish stocks. The largest wetland in the world, the Pantanal, is being infiltrated by a silent killer that could destroy this fragile ecosystem. And throughout the world's oceans, huge blooms of toxic algae are contaminating shellfish, causing thousands of deaths. One of the big problems with biological invasions, of course, is that once they established, once the species has invaded, there's virtually nothing you can do about it. But it's hard to imagine how such tiny creatures, like these lobster larvae, can survive inside a ship. Well, the vast majority of marine life which is taken into ships' ballast tanks actually do not survive because the conditions inside the ballast tanks are very harsh, usually low oxygen, quite dark, and so therefore, during the voyage, most of them will die off. But it's the extremely hardy species and the hardy individuals that may survive, and it's the fact that they survive which makes them potentially invasive when they get to the other end. The deadly alien invaders have destroyed fishing industries, threatened power supplies, and put people at death's door. Now, as world trade grows and shipping booms, more and more ballast water is being transported. The impacts of invasive aquatic species are one of the four greatest threats to the world's coasts and oceans. The other great impacts are global climate change, overfishing, and marine pollution. And the ballast water and invasive species issue has been identified as perhaps the greatest environmental challenge facing the global shipping industry today. Progress is being made, but its momentum must be maintained so that shipping can work in harmony with the environment.